Hey what's up guys Jack here and today I'm bringing you an updated 2015 how to record PC games video. The last time I did this was in January 2013, obviously that's a bit outdated now and a few things have changed. I'll be as concise as possible, leave out the fluff and everything should be very simple to follow along with. And this process is exactly how I record my videos for YouTube at 1080p 60fps with minimal impact on frames per second, split audio channels and good file size. I actually use two recording methods now for different situations. The first one is very simple, if I'm playing on my own and just want to record footage of a game with no team speak or commentary, I'll use Nvidia Shadowplay. If you've got an Nvidia graphics card you can download GeForce Experience, link is in the description. Click the on switch for Shadowplay, go in game, press Alt F9 and that will start recording your game. It's going to give you a very nice looking 1080p 60fps video file, it's very simple and it works great for capturing gameplay footage. But what if I don't have an Nvidia card and what if I want to do more than that? What if I want to record my microphone, TeamSpeak, game audio and have all that in one video file which is easy to edit? Well in that case I would use a program called DxTory and this is the program that I use most of the time for recording games and I'm going to show you how to set that up now. First off you will of course have to acquire DxTory. It's not free, it costs around 31 US dollars which is equivalent to around 20 pound in the UK and 28 euros. If you want to get it, this is the official website here. I've linked it in the description below as well. Once you've downloaded it, go ahead and install it. Now, before we start configuring DxTory, we need to download a codec for it. The codec I use is called Matrox 2.0, and this works with Windows 7, 8, and 8.1. It's by far the best codec I've used in terms of size, quality, and performance, and you can find that here. It's linked in the description below too, so go ahead and download that and install it easy peasy. Now that we've got DxTory and the Matrox codec installed, we can start configuring and tinkering around with stuff, so go ahead and load up DxTory. It might look a little confusing at first, but there's only a few things in here that we really need to care about. First, click on the folder tab at the top and then add a folder. This is where our video files are going to be saved. So pick one of your hard drives, make a folder in there if you need to and select that location with OK. Now we want to click on the clock symbol here and go to run. This will run a small benchmark on your hard drive to determine the write speed of it. You want to be aiming at around 100 or above for 1080p video files. Obviously if you've got a faster hard drive or an SSD you'll score higher numbers here but for the most part 100 or above is great. Next go to the keyboard tab, in here we'll select our start and stop video capture key and also a screenshot key if you want to do that. I've got my capture key set to F8 and my screenshot key set to F11. You can copy these if you want or choose new ones, whatever you fancy. Next up is the really important one, the video tab, so click on the little camcorder at the top there. In the codec box, click the down arrow and select the Matrox MPEG-2 iFrame HD codec. That's the codec that we just installed. Select it and click the pen on the right to configure it. Change the data rate to 250 MB sec and change the frame rate to 60. You can record at 30 FPS if you want to or if you've got like a really slow hard drive. But now that YouTube supports 60 FPS videos and they look so great, you really want to aim for 60 FPS. Now click OK and then go back to the video tab. On the right here, make sure that the frame rate is at 60 FPS so everything syncs up. File output should be ticked and down here at the bottom right, you want to click size and input the width and height of your monitor. This is the resolution that the video file is going to be recorded at. As the same as most people nowadays, I play games on a 1080p monitor. 1080p 60fps is the standard for quality on YouTube, so I would strongly advise recording in that resolution. So go ahead and put in 1920 for the width and 1080 for the height. Of course, if you've got a different resolution monitor, put that resolution in there. Or if you want to record in 720p, you can put 1280 by 720 an alternative way of setting the resolution is by clicking percent and 100% so it always captures the same resolution that you're playing the game at. Keep in mind though the YouTube player is a 16:9 aspect ratio and is best viewed on 1080p screens. 
Next up is the audio tab and this is where we need to select our audio devices. To start with I'm going to select my speakers at the moment that's my digital output. I'm also going to add another track by pressing the plus button and selecting my microphone so if I'm doing commentary on a game it's going to record that in the same video file too. I'll show you how to set multiple audio tracks later on in the video. And that's it really for the setup. If you've got performance problems, you can try changing processing threads to four in the advanced tab or reducing the data rate in the codec settings. 150 is the absolute minimum I would go to to keep the level of quality high. So now with DX Tori set up, I'm going to show you quickly how it looks in game and how to use it. I've loaded up BF4 here and you'll notice in the top left that the DX Tori user interface is active. We've got the green numbers up there and that's the frame rate the game is currently running at. And when I press F8, remember that's my start recording key, the game will start recording, the UI turns yellow and it also now shows me the frame rate that the video is recording at. That's 60 FPS just like we selected. Now to stop recording, I've got to press F8 again. The file is created and the UI turns back to green to signify that. So back on Windows, let's take a look at the file now. It's very nice, 1080p, 60 FPS, the quality is great. The file size is good and there was very little performance hit on the system. Awesome, you've now learned how to record PC games with DXTory. Go you, pat yourself on the back. And now we get into the good stuff. If I load up Sony Vegas, this is the program that I use to edit my videos and drag the file that we just recorded in, we can see that DXTory has correctly separated the video and the two audio tracks that we made. This track is the video, this one is the game audio, and this one is my microphone. And we've got separate control over each of these, which is great for editing. But what if we were playing with other people using TeamSpeak and Skype? If we recorded the video like we just did, then their voices would be in the same track as the game audio and that's pretty bad. It means that we can't control individual volumes and also we can't edit or use them separately. As an example, maybe you just scored the best goal ever in Rocket League, but your friend is talking about the latest episode of Duck Dynasty. It takes some of the magic away, doesn't it? So ideally, we want to create a file where game audio, mic audio and TeamSpeak audio are on separate tracks and I'll show you how to do that now. There's really two simple ways of doing it, one that costs money and one that doesn't. The one I use is the simplest solution, but it also requires some cash. I use a mixer or a mix amp as it's called. This is an Astro USB mix amp. You can buy them online. I have it plugged into my PC via USB and also via the optical output, which means I've got two audio sources to use, both going into the same headset. In Windows, one of them is the Realtek digital output. That's the optical cable. And one of them is the Astro Gaming USB mix amp. So now in Windows, I select the Realtek digital output as my default device. So that's going to be playing my Windows and my game sound. And then in TeamSpeak or Skype, I have to select the USB mix amp as the output device. So now the game audio and the TeamSpeak audio are on separate audio lines. And in DXTory, it looks something like this. That's my mic audio, that's my game audio, and that's my TeamSpeak audio. And this is how it looks in Sony Vegas. When we open the file, we can see that we've got four separate tracks now. This one is the video. This one is my microphone. That one is the game audio. And this one is the TeamSpeak audio. So now we're free to edit each track individually. I can remove my friend speaking on TeamSpeak if I wanted to and just use the game audio. That's brilliant and gives us a lot of flexibility when editing. So that's how I do it, but what if you don't have a mixer? Well, you can actually do this with software as well. And as it turns out, it's free and it's pretty easy to set up. The program you're gonna to need to download is called Voice Meter. You can download that here. Link is in the description. You'll also need to download the VB virtual audio cable from the same website and that's located here. Guess what? Links in the description. So go ahead and install both of those. Voice Meter is a setup that you have to run and install. It's pretty simple. And the virtual audio cable is a folder that you extract and then pick either the 32-bit or 64-bit install. Most people using Windows nowadays will have 64-bit, so it's most likely going to be this one. Just make sure that you right-click and run it as an admin or you won't be able to install it. And once you've installed it, you'll have to restart your PC. So go and do that now and come back to the video once you've loaded in again. 
Welcome back, you sexy minx. The next step is to load up voice meter. Hold up for a second though. When you load it up, you probably won't be able to hear me until you go to your sound options. So you're gonna have to right click on the volume control in the bottom right. Go to playback devices and find the voice meter input. Right click on that and select set as default device. You need to do this. And once you've done that, you should be able to hear me again. Voice meter does look a little confusing on the surface, but basically copy what I do and it should be a breeze. You've only got to do this once, remember. In the first column, leave the first hardware input as blank and make sure that nothing's selected. We don't need anything there. On the second hardware input, select MME cable output VB audio virtual and make sure that A is highlighted in green. On the virtual input, that should be the third column along, it should already say VB audio voice meter at the top and make sure that only A is highlighted in green. And finally, on the hardware out section, that's the fourth one along, click A1 and select your WDM default audio device, aka your speakers or headphones, what you use to hear stuff. In my case, as I said earlier, it's my Realtek digital output. For most people, this is probably gonna be called speakers or Realtek audio, something along those lines. We don't need anything selected for A2, and that's everything. Next, click menu and save settings. And also, if you think you're gonna be using this program a lot and want it to load up with Windows, you can select system tray run at startup and that means it's gonna load whenever Windows loads. Okay, that's pretty much it for voice meter. Remember to set it as your default device in sound options if you haven't done that already. Now we've got our virtual audio cable set up. We need to select it in TeamSpeak or Skype and make sure it's on a separate track. So here in TeamSpeak, I've selected my playback device as cable input, VB audio virtual cable. If you use Skype, go to tools, option, audio settings and change speakers to cable input, VB audio virtual cable. And to test it's working, you can hit the little play button there and you should be able to hear the lovely Skype jingle. Beautiful. Congratulations, you've now set up separate audio lines and all we need to do is go back into DX Story and add the new audio tracks. Load DX Tory up and go to the audio tab. Make sure one of the audio streams is your microphone. The second audio tab should be voice meter input. That's your game audio. And the third audio tab should be cable input. That's your Skype and TeamSpeak audio. Remember, you can add or remove more if you so desire. But now we've got three separate audio tracks, which is amazing. Let's load up a game, record a file with people speaking in the background and see what we're left with. Okay, so I just went into game there and asked a couple of my friends to talk whilst I was recording a video. Let's get the file we just made and drag it into Sony Vegas to take a look at it. Hey guys. Have you on the swimming course either? Oh, Jack. Can, uh, you can you just say something for me? Play? Yeah, we can say something. Yeah, just say anything you like. Anything Hello, you like. my name is Jack Frags. I create YouTube I like content for the website, YouTube. For the All right, thanks. And there we go, just like magic, we've now got three separate audio tracks using free software that's very easy to set up. Here is my microphone, here's my game audio, and here's my TeamSpeak or Skype audio. Awesome. You can now remove or edit voices if you want to, or just use the game sound, the world is your oyster, and this really opens up so many more possibilities for video creation. And that's about all it takes, that's how I record my videos. I use Shadowplay when I'm on my own, when I just want to get gameplay footage. And most of the time I use DxTory using the Matrox codec when I want to record TeamSpeak and my mic. In terms of rendering, I'll quickly show you how I personally do that, although there are lots of ways to render videos in Sony Vegas and Adobe Premiere, but this is how I do it. Always make sure that you disable resampling. Right click on the clip, go to properties and make sure disable resample is selected. I believe it's called frame blending in Adobe Premiere. I then add the computer RGB to studio RGB levels to the clip as well as a color corrector with a 1.2 saturation to give the video a little bit of a pop and a bit more vibrance. It's going to look a bit washed out in the video preview but in the final video file the colors will be correct. I then go to file render as and select the Sony AVC MVC format. Click customize on the internet 1920 by 1080 template. Change the frame rate to 60, field order to none. Bit rate 25999360, encode mode automatic and enable progressive download is unchecked. Click OK and then render. When that's finished, you'll have a nice looking 1080p 60fps video file which has got a low file size and maintains a strong level of quality. 
And that's literally everything I do for my videos. I upload daily to YouTube and that's the recording and rendering process that I use. I hope that helps you guys out. I know it can be very daunting at first, but once you've done it a few times, it becomes second nature. Please let me know if you've got any questions or problems in the comments below. I'll try to respond and help out. Also, if anyone asks the question, how do I record games on PC, then share this video with them. It should be easy enough to follow along and understand. Thanks ever so much for watching guys and girls. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.